we have the life essential elements. Most life essential element, they will say, is carbon. But carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, there's three of them. All your amino acids, from your glucose to your fats to amino acids, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen are most life essential. If you have an enzyme, even though glucose is just carbon, oxygen, a little bit of hydrogen, you need enzymes. So nitrogen has to play a part in that. Again, the two other ones that are most life essential, phosphorus and sulfur, these elements are used in biological pathways as well as providing energy. But when you see the elements that are involved here, silicon, a little bit of boron, you've got your metals here. It's really interesting to look at the periodic table. When you see zinc, copper, nickel, cobalt, iron, cobalt and iron, Vitamin B12, I think it is. You'll see it. Cobal albumin. Cobal albumin. I don't even know, but I could spell most of it. These metals are used as, in the middle of these enzymes to break bonds, to create new bonds. Anytime an enzymatic reaction is happening, there's usually a metal in the middle of this thing. So again, when you see some more life essential elements to humans, molybdenum, chromium, Titanium, vanadium, manganese, zirconium, calcium. It's not only used in your bones. Calcium is used in your heart as well as other elements that are used. So again, here are the life essential elements. Life essential elements, you've got carbon, you've got nitrogen, you've got oxygen, amino acids, phosphorus, sulfur, DNA backbone, phosphates, holding your amino acids together in enzymes, sulfate, disulfide bonds. These are electrolytes, your anions, chloride anion, fluoride anion. Hydrogen is always mentioned, but, you know, it's the proton, so it's not even that. Tin, stannous fluoride was what we used to use when we were kids in our toothpaste. Now it's sodium fluoride. But these electrolytes, again, on this side, your cations. You've got sodium, potassium. These, when little kids get diarrhea, a lot of their electrolytes are flushed out. Chloride anions, sodium especially. This is why your mom used to make you gargle with salt water. Your tissues have osmotic pressure, it's called. When you have water, these salts, I ask a lot of kids, do, does water conduct electricity? You'd be surprised how many say, yeah, but it's the salts. Dissolved anion-cations ratios. Magnesium, backbone of DNA holds magnesium 2 plus charge. Calcium is used in your bones. It's also used in your heart. Okay, these are neurons firing. Sodium potassium pumps keep these things going. The heart uses calcium, two plus ions. Cations are called. Next, we've got the periodic table of solar abundances. So when you see, this is the distribution of elements in the solar system. Hydrogen, obviously, is going to be most predominant because when the Big Bang spread everything out, the hydrogen protons were what were most abundant. Next to that was helium. So when we look at the elemental distribution in the solar system, hydrogen, helium, oxygen is next. If you remember the, what they call the elemental nucleogenesis in stars, technical terms, right? Stars are making elements. Remember neutron bunny, hydrogen, two ups and a down quark to make the neutron, which then two of those deuteriums come together to make the helium-4, the alpha particle. Triple alpha, carbon. Add another alpha to that, oxygen. So look at this now. Oxygen is more predominant in the solar system than even carbon. Magnesium even more so. Look at this. I drew this so you can look at the size and see what the abundances are in the solar system. 
So again, we have all these metals, iron. This is what they love to say is the end product of solar fusion, solar fusion, fusion, fusion. Well, it goes beyond that. Cobalt and nickel are in the same peak of what they call the energy release, binding energy when it comes to solar, solar meaning sun, stars. Our sun makes elements, but there's other stars out there that must have exploded sooner than the sun was even made because where did the carbon come from? Carbon won't be made in our sun. Some people like to predict that someday the sun will get hotter and expand and contract and this and that. I don't know. So what I say is we are older than the sun. You are older than the sun. The carbon dioxide, the carbon monoxide that you're breathing, you're breathing in oxygen, you're breathing out carbon dioxide, that oxygen, carbon, was made in stars long before the sun was even made. So when they say we are made of star dust, we are made of star rocks, we're made of elements from stars that have already blown. They'll say that the element iron is the end product. Everything above iron was made in a supernova. Well, that's not true because there's an atmosphere around stars that it was found that there's a neutron window where neutrons can actually add and make bigger elements up to bismuth. The bismuth 209 is a great one to see on the chart of the nuclides, as we'll take a look at later. We have that here for you. So when we look... The most abundant elements in our solar system. Magnesium is up there on top. See how this cor correlates and coincides with the elements that are essential to human beings. Remember the metals here. See the metals? Again, it's almost picture perfect to the elements that are needed for a human being. So silicon actually just happens to be a lot higher than the phosphorus and sulfur were. Noble gases, we see a lot of neon and argon. We don't use those in our biological systems, so they're not considered essential, but there's a lot of it in our solar system. I find this fascinating that the same metals that are in a human being that just happen to be utilized in enzymes happen to be what the abundance in our solar system are. So the life essential elements are the same as what are being made in that are available. I'm not saying they're made in our solar system. They were made again in stars that must have exploded or disintegrated or somehow made and distributed throughout our solar system. So in little, we can find this on the website. You can, I actually list the numbers for the abundances and it's just interesting. I mean, look, zinc, a lot of zinc, molybdenum, zirconium, titanium, these elements are what are life essential for humans. Our uh, electrolytes ones, remember the potassium and the sodium? We got our fluorine, chlorine, bromine. This is interesting, the iodine. There isn't much iodine around, but their iodine is considered an essential element now in human beings. Iodized salt, we used to put it in the sodium chloride. Morton salt, remember the little girl with the umbrella walking along with the salt in the water? Iodized, put the iodine in there, you get what you need. Our next periodic table is the sun. Now these are the elements in the sun and what you're gonna find is these are highly ionized. Lots of electrons stripped off them. The iron, some of these are at a plus 23, even a bare iron nucleus, 26 electrons stripped off. You'll find that a lot in the atmosphere because this is where the temperatures can go higher, but where it's denser, 15 million degrees, again, you're not gonna find iron in the core of the sun. It's gonna be predominantly the hydrogen, a lot of helium because that's what's getting fused. And it's not just gonna be the hydrogen proton. This is where you find the deuterium, where you find the helium three, two protons, one neutron. The alpha particle is the stable one that you find predominantly when you're talking helium. It's usually the alpha particle. But in the core of the sun, you won't find that so much that the metals will exist there. But in the atmosphere, when you look spectroscopically, you'll find the spectral lines for iron. A lot of iron in the sun. So how does this relate? It'd be nice if we could do an overlay of the elements